All right, with Freeport MacMoran, we're going to look at an example of a falling wedge pattern and how we would manage the accompanying trade. Okay, the way that you establish a falling wedge is you look at the prior low and you simply connect the dots with other lows. And so what you've got here is you've got the prior low right here established and then you're simply connecting the dots of the accompanying following lows, okay, which creates your bottom trend line. And then you do the same for the upward trend line. You take the prior high and you simply connect all the subsequent highs. And so in this case, you've got the prior high here or the beginning of the high. And then you've got the next high where it reverses. And you've got the next high where it reverses. And so now what you've got is right here, you've got a established falling wedge. You'll see that it's not a parallel line to each other. You see this one is descending faster than this one. So what you're going to want to do here is when you start to see this kind of a basing pattern right through here, you can see the stock's not really going anywhere. It's just trading flat. You've got some really interesting volume activity right here where you've got huge volume but really no stock movement. That's called churning. That means everybody's having trouble making up their mind on what to do. So your buy point that you're looking for on this one is when it crosses the upper channel which would happen right here and it happened on very good volume which you'll see right through here and so your buy point is literally right here at uh, roughly seven dollars and eighty cents uh, the stock then rallies uh, quite a bit over 15 percent so you would have again adjusted your stops up or at least brought it to break, break even the stock rolled over again and then you had a new buy point that you could establish when it tests the prior support line, which again in the falling wedge would be right here. If you bought the position you had your stop in, you would have not been stopped out. But if you did adjust your stops, you would have been stopped out up here and you would have looked for this to establish a new buy point, which that point really produced a powerful move to the upside for you here as you can as you can see, Freepoint MacRand really made a powerful move. As a matter of fact, it had a huge gap to the upside right here. So this is how you can use a falling wedge for a profitable trade and how you manage that trade into two potential purchases. Again, Freeport Mac Moran, uh, October of 1998 through May of 1999.